Um, welcome to Neil and Enrico's AM Boff. I'm sorry I haven't got a better introduction today. I'll just hand over now. Hi. Um, I can introduce um, since, um, well, uh, since I'm becoming the stage guy, so I can just introduce. Huh? Uh, no, um, this buff is a kind of quick idea we threw up. Um, th we were talking about how we do as AM and things we like, things we don't, and so on. And we had just had the idea that uh, AMs usually work kind of alone. And it would be nice since there's many AMs around DevConf to just sit down around the table, well, kind of. and just tell each other how we actually do our AM thing and we can ask questions to Adam, we are lucky enough to have one around here. And see, because maybe someone's got like better ideas than me on how to do things. Someone found a way to um, write the AM report in a way that doesn't get you bored to death for a couple of days. Um, someone find a nice way to go past task and skills by doing some practical stuff instead of lots of questions. I don't know. Um, I, I have no idea how other AMs do their thing. And I don't have many, I don't have any AM living in Bologna and so we can't hang out at the pub and to, to talk about how we do things. So the idea was to try and do it here. There's no pub, but uh, beer. <laughs> so yeah, that's the idea of the pub. I uh, don't know if you want to add something. No. Uh, okay. Due to recent uh, being busy with other things, we just didn't have much time to, any time to, actually structure the buff a little bit and see how it's possible to facilitate such such a discussion. Um, but so, does something have any? Mm, does, uh, did something come up with a way of doing some part of AM which is or her or she is uh, particularly happy with? Like, does anyone think she has or she has a good idea that works and is working? Okay, ju right. Uh, Okay, is, um, yeah, Mion suggests to start with an introduction. So, how many of us are AM? Quite a few. Quite a few. Um, how many of us uh, became AM recently? Uh, what is recently? Um, I have no idea. Uh, what uh, it's as a recently is a subjective perception, so that uh, if you consider yourself a recent AM, then okay, nothing. Yeah. Sorry. One could define recently being in the NM committee, which means has approved an AM and got it through in the last six months. Okay. Uh, any, anyone is a YAM and not in an M committee? Then, couple. All right. So, I guess I'll start with my uh, own experience, and I, we bring it on. So I became a YAM. I know what was it? A year, a year and a half ago. Uh, was a bit. Pu I was a bit puzzled about the whole thing because it couldn't read AM reports of other people. Um, it was all right, I mean, going through yeah, PHP and task and skill was kind of straightforward. You just start following the templates, so that kind of flows by itself. But when you actually get to write the AM report, there's lots of uh, mystical things involved, like um, how to format the email um, mailbox, and you need to have like a mailbox and uh, uh, a formatted version which is printable with all the unrelevant quotes removed and you have no idea of what quotes are unrelevant and uh, you have no access to previous AM reports so that was kind of a first little bit of a shock to me um, so I just went on and tried to do my best and 
turns out it kind of worked. And TBM gave me a couple of suggestions as front desk, which I tried to use for the next things, and and that was about it. The way I do stuff at the moment, I didn't process many people. I do, uh, um, I do one at a time, and um, and sometimes I'm inactive as well for lack of time. So I'm kind of doing my uh, not so good best. But um, I usually the way I do them, I, I use the templates and uh, I try to cut away um, questions that I don't feel they are relevant to what they do. Um, so if someone is maintaining Python libraries, uh, no, sorry, someone is maintaining Python programs, I'm probably not going to ask about library questions, see library linking questions on the ground that he's probably going to get through that when he, when he comes to it. But I still don't know if that is a good idea. Um, and I try to have a look at their, at their packages uh, what they do and try to give them suggestions about useful tools they have and other parts of Debian they may want to get in touch to. That's, I think, the only two customizations I apply to my, to, to, to what I perceive to be a kind of ISO standard uh, AM ship. And I think that's all for me. I don't know if you want to go on. Well, uh <coughs> Certainly, I, my experience was uh, quite similar to Enrico's. One of the first major mistakes I made with my AM report was attaching the full mail log and putting it on a public web server somewhere. So that was available for download by anyone. And I quickly got told off by uh, Marquis and Ganef. Um, Um, I have never actually been through the NM process, so I, I guess this is a kind of a stupid question. What is supposed to be the design goal of uh, NM? Uh, I have heard various things from various people. One of them, I mean, the obvious one is that we want to test to see whether uh, the candidate is going to help improve Debian as an OS. Russ Albury mentioned that the fact that our NM process takes months, maybe years, is a positive thing because it does tend to separate out people who are not truly dedicated. Because anybody who is not really dedicated is gonna last through our process. I'm not sure that was the design goal, but it seems to have worked out that way anyway. So what are we testing for? Would somebody like me actually get through the NM process as it exists today? I am not at all confident that I would be able to. I'm probably uh, too idiosyncratic to pass through the uh, NM process anymore. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, this is, I'm rambling. So if you could just answer the thing about what are we testing for, uh, do we, re uh, recognize that there are different kinds of workers that we need in Debian, and does the NM process cater to such variety? Uh, I would like to <coughs> I would like to answer that question in my case because uh, what I do with the with the NM process is that, well, I've had only two N two applic applicants, both them dropped because of uh, lack of time, and but still what I do with them is that I consider them already Debian developers in a way, like Debian maintainers. They have their packages, they 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 have, uh, no, they don't have upload rights, but I try to keep them sponsored as much as possible. I I. I tell them to go mentors and and, and uh, try to, to get as much information as possible from other Debian developers. And and what I do in the in the full NM process is just like complete that that feeling I, I have of them. Like there should be Debian developers. They should know how to upload a package, how to create a package, if they want to be packagers, of course. And then what I do is just like I, I test 
the rest of the of the like P PNP and and uh, task and skills by just uh, trying to deviate as much as possible from the from the templates. So I take the templates, I modify some things, I send them, and then I pick things, and then I go through them a bit further. Well, the first thing you said was that you consider them Debian developers because they have packages and they're maintaining them. Which begs the question, is a Debian developer just a glorified packager? Uh, or uh, is being a Debian developer, does it go beyond just packaging up some piece of software that you happen to like and use? I personally think that be, if all we are doing is testing packages, uh, we are putting way too much effort in something which does not actually require this much, we can probably automate the process. Creating pack good packages is something that is a testable skill. We don't need 18 months of NM to just create people who can package them in packages. Um, if I may, um, I wouldn't want this both to become a let's reform NM because we're going to have it this afternoon. Although uh, I, the question of what do we want from what do each of, each of us, what it's, it's, I want this to be more of an experience sharing between AM. Uh, although the question is what do we expect, what do we look for from, an, uh, from a candidate is I think a very good one that we could like, everyone's probably got different things so um, uh, Jesus considers them to, to be Debian developers already and uh, tries to fill, it, fill in the last steps. I personally, um, I personally just would like to get myself convinced that this person could be a useful workmate, uh, basically. And um, and yeah, I, I understand the frustration with the long um, thing. I went through in a week. And I guess if it had taken more for me, I wouldn't have gotten through either. And I try to keep it short for my candidates as well. Um, normally, my candidates went through fairly quickly, except this last one, which is just waiting three months to reply my mails. So, <laughs> not, well, um, but, uh, but, but he says it's very busy, so that's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, um, other people, well, what do you look for in well, um, I, I think uh, handling bugs is a big part of it, and that really can't be done in a very short period of time uh, unless they've already done it before they apply. And it's how much commitment they really have to the project, which, you know, you can come in really enthusiastic on a project and then give up with in two or three months. So I, I took 10 months to go through NM, and that was about three years ago. So, and I'm now wor working on my first application, so. Others? Uh, I just wanted to complete a bit what, what I said before. I mean, when I tr said that I was trying to deviate as much as possible for the templates, I meant that I tried to look for other skills in the person. Like, I read his emails, I read his, his answers to, to mailing lists, I, I see how he collaborates with other people. If he's a, a flamer or, or if he's a, like, a, a total ass trying to, to make others feel bad, as I've seen some people doing it. And, and I, don't, I don't believe that person should be <coughs> should be uh, led just inside a project where you're, you're supposed to work in teams and you're supposed to collaborate with other people just immediately. I mean, that person should, should learn to, to collaborate and, and, and to work with others without like engaging in, sorry? And I'm not, I don't know how good a collaborator I am. Right, but even you have, have the ability to work with other people when it comes to... Not more. demonstrably. Well, we're working together right now. I mean, to some extent. So, um, but I mean, part of the thing that has to be able to, even if you prefer working alone, is ability to communicate with other people when you have an issue to talk with other developers. Um, and so, I mean, one of the things that happens is when people can't do that, 
then they get in a situation where they're ostracizing themselves from the project. Um, and it's, I mean, maybe, I guess some people prefer to be ostracized, but you know, in the in part, it's something that maybe we should be looking for a little bit more closely as the interaction between developers. Yeah, I guess working together in this case means like <laughs> reporting a bug report decently or reacting to a bug report without being offended. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that sort of basic things that makes it actually work rather than, I, I don't think anyone can get rejected from an M for not answering a bug report in a cheerful way. <laughs> so, <laughs> luckily enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, there was someone, I, I've seen the microphone rolling around. No, okay, it was rolling to the microphone holder. Um, so we can go on, I guess. Uh, no, uh, Marie? Yeah, well, for me, I guess that the, although it's not necessarily what you're thinking about on a day-to-day -day level, the point of AM really is to find out whether the person is appropriate to be a member of the community of Debian. And I, although, I mean, you're say, people are saying about working together, and that's, I don't, again, it's not just on um, whether you'd like to co-maintain or become part of a team, but everyone in Debian does need to be part of that community in the way that they interact with other developers or with users. Um, and therefore, um, but the other, another point, uh, quickly, uh, I think a lot of the people who spend a long time in AM, sorry, in NM, um, I think often it's because the AMs are, very, are generally very reluctant to reject people. Um, so some people just stay in NM for, until they give up. That's the most common way that for people to leave NM, that they are in it for a long time and then they give up. It's very rare for AMs to reject people before that. Yeah. Yeah, that also sucks. I mean, you get in, into some kind of contact with someone and you see that he's putting some effort in it and you don't want, yeah, you, at some point you don't feel like you want to turn them down, which is, I don't know, maybe a problem that we're having now, but um, anyone's got experience about it. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask a question uh, of every AM. Um, could somebody who has done the task-based uh, tasks where instead of asking questions, you assign tasks to your uh, NM, like talk through how that worked and how you, I mean, what I'm most interested in is how you figured out parity between the tasks and task and skills. Um, so I mean, because one of the things that's scary for uh, new AMs coming in and abandoning the templates is that they don't necessarily know a priori when they've achieved parity between the task questions that they're asking and the policy questions that they're asking and the tasks that they're assigning. So I mean, anybody who's done an AM who's done the task-based, uh, so deviating from templates, I I'd love to hear uh, from you. Now or later, whenever it doesn't matter. So has uh, anyone here actually, uh, instead of using the templates, uh, used the task-based system? I haven't done the task-based check with any NM, but I've got some feedback from the front desk about it, who did it with at least one applicant. And he said it was much, much more work than the usual template-based checks and used a much longer time to get that stuff done. So it wouldn't help with the time some people need to go through NM. My fear with task-based thing is that you end up doing something that the person is not interested in doing. Like, I don't like the, 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 the task and skill question, like pick up a random package without a man page and write a man page. Because it may happen that there's no package without a man page that this NM uses. And so it, you end up forcing someone to write a man page for something he doesn't totally care about and he doesn't know. Uh, which which is probably uh, be could be compensated by just go on and looking at a man page this person has written for a package which already exists. Um, so that that's my main fear. Well, that that is a problem I would have with task-based things. 
Although you may agree on a task together, instead of assigning it, it's like, do you see, we can fix a RC bug together, these sort of things. Uh, although the other fear I would have is, how do I format the AM report? Because that would generate lots of emails going back and forth and maybe IRC logs. And so it's very easy, we, we almost have a recipe, although boring, for creating AM reports with the normal tasking skills. You remove some of the quote and you're done. Well, you remove quotes, format, well, but it's kind of straightforward, it's just boring. But when you have lots of mails and you have to f format them into a printable version, then you lose threading. Um, so that, that's like another thing I wouldn't know how to do. I've been tempted to say, let's fix back together. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it happened to me that I've been Post, I've been attaching uh, an IRC log which DNM sent me as a signed email because it just felt like that was a nice way of doing it because we were just chatting for IRC and I has asked him about how to do something in Debian and he knew it. So it was like, well, we were working together but I also happened to be your AM and you just answered me a technical question I didn't know. I guess I should put that in the report. Um, but yeah, that's kind of cumbersome, I don't know. Um, Moray? Um, I was trying the task based system with one of my applicants and it utterly failed. It was mostly because I picked the wrong package. Um, it was a package I, I had just orphaned before in the IM, I, MIA process and some other person just wanted to adopt it. So I, I ended up blocking the uh, adoption process. So um, maybe it was just because I picked the wrong package. But it, um, at, at, at that point I noticed that it's very much, uh, much more work. You have to look through the bug reports yourself, have to see w which bug tracking system is upstream using, how is the applicant forwarding stuff, and then probably working on the packages uh, also requires considerable action on your part. This is certainly something I would like to do, but next time I would have to prepare stuff um, much better before. Well, I think we should consider every um, pers every NM's process, even when we use the templates. It's still it is still task based. I mean, the most important thing for me is how they're well, how they're doing their ordinary work in Debian. So, if, if they're a packager, how are they maintaining their packages? And the, the templates you can think of really as just they're supplementary. That it's it's just a way to fill in information that you're not getting that you're not seeing easily. Um, so it's really it's just a shortcut um, because it rather than waiting for them to demonstrate every single aspect that you want to uh, ask them about. But it still seems to me that the, it's not, the, the, temp the questions are not the main thing. The main thing is how are they working in Debian in the, in the normal way. Which also brings to the idea that uh, I hear more and more often that people shouldn't go through and ham without an existing record of activity inside Debian. That may be already a, a third line of filtering, but uh, you, I see you. No, no, that they shouldn't go through an M without a previous record of activity in Debian, because that 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 would also make e it easy to test. Actually, I wonder if it would be possible to just do an a do AM process by googling the person, seeing mailing list archives, and just asking the person to sign the piece of mail which says I abide to the Debian social rules and no, sorry, the, 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 I've been talking about the community guidelines too much. To abide to the Debian social contract and, and the FSG and that, that sign mail we ask. And, and then as an AM I just say, well, I've been tracking what this person has done in the last year with Debian and I think he's just all right and you add links to relevant stuff. I don't know, Ganef, if that would be any useful. Uh, it would probably work for some people that are very active in mailing lists, but there are multiple people that are very active in their own packages, getting them done in a very good way, maintaining, th maintaining them, are very active with the users and stuff if they get questions, but are not very visible on Google or something. So it only works for a small part of the applicants, I think. 
Right, but if instead of Google I just ask them to links to mailing list archives or mm, how they close bugs and I know. If I can produce a little bit of proof or links for that, that could just replace tasks and skills? Yeah, it may replace some parts of tasks and skills and also PNP as you can find some uh, how they behave and what they know in that stuff. It won't replace all of it, but parts can, for some people, certainly be replaced with that. Which actually prompts an interesting thing, because I also feel that most of the things I ask, I don't necessarily want to know them, but I feel like I have to, or front desk won't be happy with the report, or the dam won't be happy with the report. Um, uh, like, for example, when I ask a question, uh, when should I consider myself happy with the reply? I would be happy if a person just replies with a link to where is the piece of information, because that means that the person can actually find out. Um, yes, that is, that is one of the intentions of the templates. You don't need to see it as a policy completely. It, it is good if you know where the stuff is written down and we also give a big set of links in one of the first templates. So uh, pure policy, copy and paste doesn't help anything. There are some questions where you need to write your own stuff, but for most part you can point there, you can point there and show that you know where you find it. There are also that many questions in the templates that you can consider some of them very optional, like the famous linker questions, which are nice to know if you ever will want to go and package a library, but it's also go good for most applicants if they know where they can, can find the information. So some short sentences about that is also okay. Thanks. Th that was a good piece of information to have. Mina? So maybe uh, it would help to create an uh, AM re report template um, so we know what the dumb or what we should expect from an applicant to know. So the currently existing templates are just optional. So when I know my applicant knows how to package libraries, I can just drop all of tasks and skills and, but then I need something to write in the report. So at, at the moment, well, I probably can't just say, yeah, this guy uh, maintains a whole bunch of libraries, does his best, has, uh, gone through several transitions and whatever and whatnot, and yeah, maybe we, we need some guidelines for the the AM report to write to. Guidelines are hard to write out, but we can try. But we can try to get some of those. Um, it's hard to write guidelines that fit all of the applicants. Like we had, I think Russ Albury was that, who has done some very intense <coughs> task and skills set with his AM, going through a fucking huge transition, which was only for one library, but got multiple other libraries sucked in getting those from unstable to testing, like some 50 or 60 mails alone in the AM report. And for people that manage such a transition, it's very easy to skip other parts of the task and skills, but because based on that, you can see that he knows what he is doing and that he knows his stuff. I think I've got another question in the front there. Yeah. Hi, my name is Barry Hawkins. I'm actually a new maintainer in the queue. Uh, Andy Bart is my application manager. And just listening to you guys and then having uh, listened to the, um, the NM process video last year, um, it seems like Manoj's question is one of the most pertinent uh, because until the, until the destination is defined, you won't really know when you've gotten there. And until it's a little more clearly defined, what you want out of the process, it's, it's kind of hard to say, well, we're, we're getting closer. For, to give you a, just a sh very short case study, um, 
I applied. I was uh, told, hey, go ahead and apply. You've been maintaining packages for months. Um, I waited like seven months and then got a message where I was initially turned down, actually. Um, I work as part of the Debian Java packaging project, so my name is not in the maintainer field of any of the seven packages that I've been maintaining for a year at that point. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we kind of worked that out. And <clears throat> the advice that was given to me uh, as I started through PNP1 was uh, whatever you do, don't screw up because then they might tell you you're not ready yet and then you got to go all the way back through. So in PNP phase one, I probably have 30 to 40 hours invested in answering those questions that consist of about 10 to 12 pages. There are actually two weekends out of my life where I told my wife, I'm not getting anything done this weekend because I'm going to sit down and go through these things. And quite honestly, the process is so obscure, I don't know if I may be rejected or if I'm boring the hell out of Andy Bart. I don't know. But it's literally, it's, it's such an obscure process and I really don't think the destination is defined so, and so that it's kind of tough to know how we're going to get there. And I think the last thing that's going to facilitate the process is, well, given that we don't really have the destination that well defined, let's actually make the process more complex by having an organic process where you kind of try to adapt to the individual situation. I totally see the merits of adapting it because certainly as a Java packager, not spending a lot of time in the shared C libraries, uh, you know, this stage of life. So anyway, just an observation as one who's in the meat grinder currently. Um. It's basically more, more like a question. If I have an applicant which I, which I uh, know he is good at packaging and I, I see it everywhere on the mailing list and so on, uh, can I just uh, reference that? Or uh, do I have to do a task or skill check for each package anyway? Uh, you should look at the packages if you find something obvious. But if he is doing a good packaging job since a long time, you can just write it down there and list some examples and stuff. You don't need to do intense checks then. Um, I see our time is running up, so we could get to the point where we have some solutions. Um, there was this proposition some time ago that uh, we introduced some system where we have centrally stored mailboxes for each AM, which would be optional. Um, would any AM, maybe NM, object to the full NM report being published to all other application managers? So I, I would, because it seems like no one is, knows what the others are doing because no one has seen an, another report except for the front desk and uh, the, the account manager. So I would like um, maybe to open the NM mailboxes, the, the front desk communication, I don't know which part of it to, to maybe all of Debian, all of the application managers. So um, are there any objections at that point, Rene? Well, I, I personally wouldn't mind, but uh, I would uh, suggest to make it optional. So ask the uh, NM or the AM whether they, whether they want to. Because there might be NMs who don't want to uh, have it published. There might, there might be AMs who don't. It would be an internal publication just for the other AMs. So, uh, I personally wouldn't like if it gets public for a whole Debian. Well, the templates itself are public, but I don't think the whole report should be completely public. Um, the NM committee gets some reports from every now and then whenever dumb rejects the complete. The NM committee yeah. does only contains experienced AMs and that not the beginners. Yeah, uh, yes, of course. Um, also, the front desk is reading the reports of every new application manager, the first one or two completely and giving them tips, hints, and remarks wherever he has something not done completely like it could be done or well, where he missed stuff. 
things that you should do. Maybe those things could be done to the LM list, AM maintainer, to the application managers, so more people see what could be enhanced. Uh, I should now have a question for the dam. Suppose I, um, suppose I write, uh, I, I try, like, like now I'm a bit lightened up from this talk and I, I may be less of a bureaucratic nuts. Would, I would fear less that if I don't fill in every single bit, the application is rejected. And so maybe I risk exceeding the other way around, like making it too quick and the applicant is not very well asserted, asserted, assessed. Um, if you are not happy about the AM report, do you get back to me or to the candidate? Um, it depends on what is missing or wrong in the report. If it's clearly an AM thing that he completely missed it and you can see that the applica applicant itself has the knowledge or could have it if it's if the report would be done in the right thing, then we should go to the application manager and educate him to avoid those mistakes in the future. But at the most times I've seen a bad report until now, so it wasn't only the application manager, it was also the applicant having some, uh, he missed some things over the whole report and didn't look like he involved. Okay, because my fear was like, suppose that I now start experimenting and uh, I make wrong choices, but then the applicant maybe spends some time in the queue and uh, and then the dam gets back to him saying like, hey, this is missing, like, tell me about this, this and that. And that's kind of like he's paying for my mistake. Um, at so the moment, front desk is usually that fast with such questions. So okay. they are cleared by front desk. Right, okay. Shortly after the AM sensor report. Um, another question I would have is to do we want some better means to communicate with each other? Is the, new uh, the Debian new main list enough or do we want something more private? Maybe something like the committee list but for all AMs to uh, talk to each other? We could try that, that's no problem. New main could be for public and if it's something AM only like if you have a really bad applicant and want to talk about it, what to do with it, we could certainly set up an uh, alias on Merkel, which is an M Debian org, to only communicate with all applica application managers, which are active at the moment. That would also be a good place to publish the reports that are both by applicant and application manager agreed to uh, mail to other application managers. Um, while there might be a need for a private channel, I would uh, say that we should have a specific requirement for hiding communication before we do so because as far as possible, we should be an open project. And if we do have a applicant which is problematic, uh, maybe we could still communicate about this, such an applicant in a non-secret manner as long as we uh, remain uh, polite in our uh, emails. That's a very good point. Remaining polite and that was Debian's flame was, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's of course a good point not to, to hide anything, but I don't think it helps in this case because uh, if people uh, do not write mail because they have to be polite and don't want to, that's not, not a good thing in this case. We so want to be, be open to the other application managers in that case. So I think an, a private mailing list for AMs would certainly help. And the, the, we have the open mailing list there, so we only have to take care that we don't uh, hide public information. So there's also the case that some points about applicants you may have shouldn't be 
that public because they can hurt his reputation because most of our lists are archived on Google and if you search for his name, I don't think everyone want everything what other things about him in a process like getting into Debian in the public archives. Yeah, I guess one scenario here is avoiding, because in NM you can just say I don't know this, but you may not want it published on Google since maybe five years afterwards, people will find that and have different idea about your skills. Uh, that's probably the most, the, the only, the most important scenario we're trying to get out from, which, well, there may be a solution which fixes both, like be an open project and not, uh, not publish long-standing incorrect assessments about people. Uh, I would see, for example, another scenario that I would like to have a private channel. If I receive a bad report about my my applicant, and I want to verify that but that bad report is is in fact uh, true, I would like, for example, to communicate with the German group because my my applicants have been German. So I want to to get some feedback if they know him, if they know the community that he works with, so that I don't have to publish on Google that I'm trying to look for for someone who, who stands for this guy. I, I don't think there is a need to, to kind of like, uh, sh like establish a, a bad beginning for a guy that is just trying to get into Debian. Although there's Debian private, I guess, could be used for that. Private mail, Debian private. Yes. Um, it certainly can't hurt to just try it and see what comes out if he has such a private alias for all application managers. It, it can only fail and then we can go to the old stuff back. And if some application managers also have questions they want to have answered in a more timely manner and not only by mail, they can also go on IRC and ask there. We have a Debian new main channel on both networks that are commonly used. So people okay. have multiple sources that, of. That I didn't know. No, you know it. Debian NM? Debian U main. Okay, no, I didn't actually. Mainly on OFTC. Okay, that's good to know. Well, I'm not an AM, but I'm trying to encourage people uh, to uh, become <coughs> Debian developers if they uh, are doing great work. So uh, I managed to get one maintainer in, the second one did, get, did uh, give up after seven or six, eight months. And the second is now in the queue, uh, the third one is in the queue for, I think, 13 or 14 months. Um, for me, as a, a non-AM, it's nearly impossible to uh, get some feedback or um, some uh, uh, status about the, the process. It's, uh, well, I can ask the actual AM, uh, but it's um, nearly impossible to, for me to, to, to fast track uh, that kind of, uh, uh, work or the person. It's, um, well, it's, um, if, if I propose somebody, I have to, um, uh, in the meantime, I have to do a lot of NMUs for him, uh, do a lot of work for him. Um, the only thing I did hear from uh, the AM was, uh, well, if you don't, don't, uh, do not want to do that work anymore, I can do it as well, instead of fast striking the process. That's uh, a bit, uh, well, strange. I think that also depends a bit on the AM those people have, what reactions you get back. Some a AMs may just answer that the applicant is waiting for mail from him or the other way around, depending on who is busy. Well, what, what I would like is to, to have um, the chance for a normal Debian developer to be, uh, uh, th that you can see the process uh, of an NM or if you are interested in an M, that you are able to follow the discussions. Um, following the whole discussions is a bit lot because you have a lot of emails exchanged between the AM and the new maintainer. And I don't think you want to get a copy of all of that which happens there. At the moment, the most commonly used part for information how far one is is really the NM Debian oxide, which is divided into the usual four steps, ID, PPTS, and Goddess account. It's hard to get more details into that side because where, where in the 
process are you setting more points to give information where the guy is? Half in PP, half in TNS, or whatever, based on the way the AM does his work with it. Okay, we're very quickly running out of time here. Uh, I, I just wanted to, to quickly say something about what, what I meant before. Uh, my point is not that we need a mailing list, a private mailing list. My point is that I would like to know what I have to do if I want to, to figure out about a person without raising a flag on him. I want to know what we have to do to be able to share information between AMs. Like if we set a, a subversion repository that I can check out other people's reports to go through them and to learn th about them. I want to know what I have to do when, when I have a person that I want, that, that is, is being like not communicative enough and I want to, to figure out more about him. Like all the processes that, that should be more clear and, and, and should be defined instead of like trying to figure out what I have to do when I have a problem with a person. I, if I, I guess, could. I guess that's the last uh, intervention and then we go to close. I, since I brought this up, uh, I was, maybe I should clarify this. We already have a private communication channel. I'm not sure we need to add to it. Most of the things that we are talking about ought to be exceptions. These ought not to be the regular modus operandi. This is not the way we conduct business. I understand that there are exceptional cases in which we need a private channel, bad channel for communication. I think even if you have to go to Debian Pride and it goes on the AMs, that's not a disaster in the few cases where you do need to uh, employ a private back channel. I, I would suggest that Debian Private uh, would be considered an uh, the default option. If Debian Private is not enough, maybe we should have a strong reason why we need yet another back channel. Okay, um, I just wanted to interject one thing really, really quick about the status. What you can always do as AMs is use the comment form in the database. One of the advantages using the comment form is that it updates the time in which you last saw the report. So if email you send PNP1, you can say sent, you can say PNP1 received. Um, I mean, so you can fill that in and that'll give uh, everybody else information on what's going on. Okay, thank you for everyone. Um, uh, I got the impression, I'm quite happy about the both. I got the impression that most of the, um, well, some of the cumbersomeness of the ENM process actually sounds like the kind of bureaucratic uh, event, the, the bureaucratic effect that happens when you have to fill up, fill up the form alone and you fear of getting it wrong, so you get more and more anal and precise and pedantic and obsessed about how to fill it in. And I myself feel like it wasn't, was fairly useful to actually share a bit of, of the experience and, and like ask some questions and see how things could I don't know, be customized or like how, how much can I apply my judgment. So I look forward to more of this discussion happening outside of this both. And we knew, we know now, we all, well, I, I know now, I probably was the only one that didn't know that we also have an IRC channel about it. They have a new main on OFTC. And later on in the day, if I'm not mistaken, there will be another buff about reform the NM process. I hope the content from this buff, uh, Mayon is running it. I hope content from this buff could be also useful context for them running uh, this afternoon's buff. Thanks for everyone to, for, uh, thanks everyone for attending here. And now is uh, the X, if I'm not mistaken, uh, X, well, XOR community, well, uh, n now uh, Nati will present the next buff. <laughs>